You know, people always assume that if you are meditating, then you are this Zen person who's just sitting on a mountain and thinking of, of um, you know, flowers sprouting slowly or the sun rising. That's not necessarily true. That's not necessarily true. People who meditate are actually much more active. Except that all action and all results of action don't have that association of feverishness. Right? So you actually enjoy your life because you're not connected with what happens. If I do this, then this will happen. If I do that, then that will happen. This idea of what's in it for me, it goes away. And you act for the sake of acting alone. Action that's needed moment to moment to moment. So while like we were talking about the way the world has become, nobody does anything without something in it for them. This is the reason, actually, that people are so terribly unhappy and so miserable. is because they're constantly looking for something to take the juice out of something. Right? And it's not the juice, it's the fiber of the fruit that's good for you. When you suck out the juice, you really have taken out not, you know, all the sugar and whatever is good in the, in the fruit. You have thrown it away. This is what happens when you constantly do things, thinking about how it's going to benefit you. And mm -hmm. it's not your fault. It's not your fault. This is how we were raised. This is what we were taught, that everything we do has to be for a benefit. If you study, then if you go to college, then if you become a doctor, then if you become a lawyer, then if you don't do your work, then if you're lazy, then we're told this all the time, all the time that no, that whatever we do, it's to, it's for a reason that to be a doctor is just to earn the money. What do doctors do? Save lives. Well, they're supposed to. Yeah. yeah, but I see my doctor exactly for 10 minutes, walks into the room, yeah. medicine, medicine, medicine. Ah, check, yeah. check, check. Oh, see you six months later. Yeah. Does he really care about you? Does he really do it for the joy because he wants to save your life? I don't think so. Not a lot of them. Some, yes. There was a time, there was a time when the family physician used to come to the house. Yeah. I don't know if any of you remember that. I don't know if it happened in America, but it, yes, they would come to the house and have a cup of tea and a couple of biscuits and talk about their children and your children. And they would, even their very presence, just coming there would make you feel better. Would make you feel better. They would say, okay, take a painkiller. You'll be fine tomorrow. And that's it. That's all you need. That love and that care and that belonging. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, every physician, every 10, you know, a physician should be spending 30 minutes with you every time you go and see him. To really find out what's going on with you. You know? But do they do that? No. They fit in a, a, a patient every five minutes. You barely get five to seven minutes and he looks like he's just waiting to leave. Not all of us are born inherently peaceful. Some of us have to work at it. To be able to be peaceful while being absolutely engaged in the world that is a boon. That is a boon. Not to get agitated with so many things that are happening in our lives. And there's plenty going on in our lives. There's plenty happening outside. Mm -hmm. And we can get engaged in activities that we are suited to without having identity with it. 
The problem is when you identify a lot that this job is my everything. Then the day your boss shouts at you in front of customers is the day you feel like, what am I doing here? What am I doing here? Right? A job is a job that may not give you all, all, all that you need to be enthusiastic. Right? No matter what you're doing, if you want to have that sense of every minute bringing something new in it. That's what I mean by enthusiastic. That whatever I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm a pharmacist, I'm preparing medications, to do everything with that thought that I am saving lives. Yeah. Right? Every minute of the day. To do it as a sense of offering, that you're giving of yourself, Mm -hmm. And while you're doing it, that you are enjoying the path, you're enjoying the passage, you're enjoying everything. That is the goal. That is the goal. It's not that meditation distracts you from this path. A lot of people say, oh, I'll meditate when I, when I retire, I'll meditate when everything's over. No, I wish you had begun meditating when you were in your 20s or in your teens when things were really bothering you, when you didn't understand what the purpose of life was, when you didn't know what choices you had to make, you didn't know how, what was a way to lead your life and what right and wrong felt like. The thing is, when things go good and things go bad, can you see them both as being the same? Absolutely the same. Because... It's only the fact that you think this is bad and this is good that lies in difference. Actually, it's all just stuff happening in your world. And sometimes the bad stuff, the things that you think are bad, a job loss, loss of a family member, somebody dying, brings out something inside you that would never have surfaced otherwise. It is only in times of extreme grief and extreme loss and extreme pain that gold gets purified. That the real you come, that the real spiritual growth happens. It's not going to happen on its own. If things are cruising along well, you're just doing things as you're doing. Whether you're enthusiastic or not, no one knows. It's the same job, same job, same job. Is it bringing out the freshness in you? Every day when you wake up in the morning, do you say, today's the day. Today I want to go. Today I want to see what, I wonder who I'm going to meet. I wonder how this day is going to pan out. I wonder what I'm going to cook this morning. I wonder how the weather is going to be. I wonder what life holds for me today. Now this is what we need, right? The same old, same old routine, morning to night, predictable. You get up, you turn on the coffee, you go brush your teeth, you have your coffee, you get into the car, listen to the radio. You don't know how you reach your work. You reach your work, you greet everybody, and then you begin taka, 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 on the computer. Mm -hmm. Right? This is how most people's day is. Routine, predictable, without the freshness in it. To do everything, every day, fresh, and alert and just because it's a job that needs to be done this moment hmm? we don't love everything that we do we don't love everything that we do but to be able to do it we have to keep body and mind alert so what is it that we need to do well, for the body, there has to be some movement. And this movement has to be out of the joy of moving. It mustn't be a punishment. It's not that you punish yourself at the gym so you can have a slice of chocolate cake. That is not the attitude to movement. right? Movement is not punishment for eating. Movement has to have joy in it. Because 
the very act of exercising gives you that adrenaline that makes you feel alive and enthusiastic. And that goes, a lot of people that either when they become a little, they have a fall or some health setback, they stop exercising. Oh, this insulin resistance, they put on a little bit of weight. And they put on a little bit of weight, they don't have the body for the gym. Now they just don't want to go to the gym. They stop going to the gym, stay at home, say, okay, I'll go for a walk. But they don't go for a walk. I'll yeah. do it tomorrow. I'll do it another day. You see, and then every time they eat, it's, it's a feeling of guilt. And the more they're guilty, they're eating the wrong food. And it's a vicious cycle that burns out the body. It never makes you feel good. So to move, no matter what shape you are, you're big, you're small, you're tall, you're short, you move every day for some time whatever it is that you do you go for a walk you do yoga you exercise vigorously you do a workout you lift weights you do tai chi whatever dancing to move every single day that helps body and mind to come together movement is important sleep is important to sleep and have a, a circadian rhythm that is balanced. So you go to sleep at around the same time every night, usually at 10 o'clock at night. If you sleep at 10, automatically your eyes will open early morning. By 5, 5.30, 6, your eyes are open, you're ready for the day. And you wake up because you've slept through the night, you wake up very fresh. You're not exhausted. You've had a good rest. Your body has rested perfectly well. Your food is so important. Not to grab a donut on the way to work or somebody's brought a few pieces of cake to indulge yourself. If you eat a non-sugary diet, a non-processed food diet, it makes a huge difference in how you feel because this whole body is about what you've put into it. And there is no doubt about it. There is no doubt that such foods make you sick. So what are you eating? That's important. That's for your body. And then there's the mind. Then there's the mind. To give a little bit of time to just be. To just be. This is called being time. And I do it in different ways. It's not just that I sit and I meditate. Yes, I do that too. But I also... Do it when I'm chopping vegetables, when I'm ironing, when I'm even watching television to just feel the hands, the body. Is my body twisted to one side? Am I pressing down? Just being time, just being and just enjoying that time of doing nothing. This is very, very important. If you do all of this, you'll be tapping into your body's ability to just, just rejuvenate itself and be alert and alive. Breathing reverses prana. It reverses prana. And when prana gets reversed, you definitely feel enthusiastic and alert. What is prana? Prana is subtle energy in your body. It's what makes the body what it is. So prana can be accessed through many different forms. And the most accessible forms that we have is food, light, sunlight, and breath. So pranayama is breath work. That's what we teach. Breathing exercises to reverse prana. Yeah. So whatever I, whatever I, I do a little bit right before the class, that's not a whole workshop. But... Maybe when I come back and this time, we'll do a full breathing workshop that y'all can learn the breathing exercises. It makes a huge difference. And I have people that are in groups that have been doing it continuously for 40 days over and over and over and over again for the last two years. It's amazing how they've done it again and again and again. They keep doing the breathing. They do it every day. They remind each other. And the WhatsApp group is like, there's just four or five of them, but that's like the whole world for me.
If four people, five people are doing it, that's amazing. And the more you learn to keep body and mind together without any interference of other things. Like I don't need a drink. I don't need company. I myself, by the quality of my life, by the things that I do in my life, bring freshness and enthusiasm to every minute of every day. Whatever I do, whatever it is, to do it wholeheartedly, putting body and mind and everything into it without expecting anything from it, just for the sake of doing it. Hmm? So carry this message with you through the year, through the new year. Hey everyone, thanks for visiting my channel and if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit the red subscribe button and turn on notifications so I can continue to bring you more content just like this on knowledge, on meditation and on insights for a happy life. Don't forget, happiness is your birthright.